Hold on to your butts, everybody. The future of gaming has arrived. It's called Google Stadia. Oh, my focus isn't on. That's the future of bad video. Google Stadia officially revealed a brand new streaming video game platform. The idea behind it is pretty simple. You let anybody play any game instantly from any device. Removing the need for expensive hardware like gaming computers and consoles, Stadia is going to let you play games on the devices you already own. You got a TV, a phone, a tablet, or yes, even a computer. Anything that can run Google Chrome can play games via Stadia. Imagine going to YouTube and watching a trailer or a review for a brand new game and then getting to play that game instantly that's the promise behind stadia there's actually a, a few really cool benefits to the idea of cloud gaming first off there's the low barrier to entry cloud gaming with stadia means that you'll never have to buy another console or gaming computer ever again there's no need for the latest graphics card or to pick up the most recent generation console to play the latest games all you will need is an internet connection and a screen. Now this also means you won't have to deal with some of the hassles of gaming hardware. You'll never have to download, install, or patch ever again. Any game that you want to play, you could just play instantly. The second major benefit of something like Stadia is that game developers are going to be able to utilize Google's massive infrastructure of hardware and servers. Or in other words, no longer will games be limited by the capabilities of that console or computer that you have in your home. Instead, it's like every single person has a cutting edge, top of the line, $10,000 gaming computer with them at all times. They'll be able to make games far better looking and larger in size and scale than ever before. And according to Google, all of that running at 4K resolution and 60 frames per second. In addition to that, the cloud system that Stadia runs on means that server and client are on the same network, which will remove much of the limitations on player count that we see in multiplayer games. This means we could go from battle royale games with one hundred players to many hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands, possibly millions of players all on the same server. That also has me pretty excited for the potential that this could mean for MMOs, but I know most of you don't give a crap about MMOs because it's, it's practically a dead genre. <laughs> along with my soul. So yes, imagine games are larger in scale, bigger worlds with better graphics that you've ever seen that could possibly run on a three or $400 console or even a couple of grand that you spend on a gaming PC. Google supercomputers running video games and you can play it on your phone. Not that I want to, I'm still gonna wanna play it on a big screen, but nevertheless you could Play, why am you, you could play it on your phone. So what's not to love? The idea is fantastic. Are there any downsides? Well, that's a good question. Thanks for asking. Well, I guess I asked because I wrote the script. Is anyone watching this? With a streaming platform like Stadia, the bottleneck for a great experience is no longer going to be your hardware, but your internet connection. Internet infrastructure in the US and in many parts of the world is just not great. Now, Google is suggesting 25 megabits per second to play games on Stadia at 4K60. And 25 megabits per second just so happens to be double the average internet speed in the US, which means most people are going to get a less than optimal experience. And what that ends up translating to is problems with latency. Latency being the time it takes between you putting in inputs, sending it to the cloud, and then getting a response back. Now, some of the early testing done by Digital Foundry put the latency of Stadia actually not far behind that of the Xbox One X, which sounds absolutely great, and this can work fantastic for a lot of games. RPGs, MMOs, action and strategy games could all work fine with this higher latency. But for competitive games, especially stuff like multiplayer shooters, any delay in inputs is bad, so that latency is going to translate to a poor experience. Now Google does hope to address some of these problems, like latency, with the fact that they've got data centers everywhere. Basically the closer you are to one of the Google data centers, the less issues you're going to have with latency. But even all of Google's power and might cannot account for the fact that a lot of people just have poor internet connections. And those poor connections can translate into other issues like poor image quality. The worse your internet connection is, the more likely you're going to deal with compression of the video, causing artifacting and pixelation, and none of this is keeping in mind bandwidth caps being a thing, internet service providers putting limits on the amount of bandwidth that you can use every single month, and you can bet your ass that streaming a video game play live is going to eat up quite a bit of bandwidth. But let's just forget that there's any problems with internet. Pretend that everyone's got the most amazing internet. Then we still have the issue of 
what about game ownership and how are we paying for this? As of right now, we still don't know the business model for Stadia, but many are suggesting that Google is looking to build the Netflix of gaming, meaning that we could be looking at a monthly subscription. And if it's not a subscription and we do get to buy games outright, what if Google shuts Stadia down? Do we just lose access to all the games that we bought? I know it might sound crazy, but here is an extensive list of all of the projects and platforms that Google has shut down in the past. Now, this is already an issue with things like Steam and this digital rights. Like we have given up a lot of our, our rights to physical hardware. And even sometimes when you get physical games, you don't own it because most of it is still on the servers. But this problem would be magnified if everything is just streamed to us and we have no local game files at all. And yes, if Google did ever shut down the service, there's a good chance we just wouldn't have access to any of those games, which might not be that big of a deal if we never bought those games in the first place and we only paid a monthly subscription. But there's another problem with the idea of a subscription-based video game service. That could really ramp up the amount of in-game microtransactions we see. Imagine if publishers and developers are no longer getting $60 per game and instead they're just getting a cut from Google from when people stream their games. There would be quite a bit of incentive to just fill your games with microtransactions as another means of making income. I mean, they're already doing it while we're still paying $60 for each game. On top of this stuff, there's also one more layer of concern and that's just Google being more involved in our lives, more so than they are already. Uh, people have concerns of privacy. They're gonna be selling a controller that does have a built-in microphone. All right, and some people are concerned about the idea that Google has another point of reference to sell information about us to advertisers. And I mean, as it is, Google's already like a mega corporation that yeah, they own like half the stuff that I <laughs> utilize. Hey, they own the platform that I make a living off of. That's terrifying in and of itself. So some people just don't want Google to be involved any more in our lives than they already are. Stadia is actually going to be officially launching this year, rolling out in the US, Canada, UK, and Europe. As mentioned before, Google is promising it will be capable of 4K resolution, 60 frames per second at launch for those of you with at least 25 megabits per second internet. Uh, they are selling a controller specific for Stadia with a Wi-Fi capabilities connected directly to the cloud. It also has a capture streaming button and Google Assist if you get stuck on any of your games. The con concept of a video game streaming platform like Stadia is really actually pretty amazing in a lot of ways. Having our games run on these Google supercomputers and being able to make experiences much larger and grander and better looking and capable of supporting more, more players than anything that we could ever have on these uh, relatively inexpensive hardwares like the consoles and even, even gaming PCs. So that could mean some pretty amazing experiences that we could just play instantly. Never having to purchase hardware ever again, not needing to download, patch, or install a game. The idea is pretty cool. This has been tried in the past. Video game streaming platforms have already rolled out. They've been playable for many years. It's just never been a good enough of experience, whether it's problems with the latency or the video quality or just people not being able to play the games because their internet isn't good enough in the first place. But again, if anyone could do this, it would be Google. They have practically have limitless resources and data centers everywhere, giving them the most most likely chance of providing a good experience for people. But besides the question of whether or not it's possible, we've got the question of, do we want this? Is handing the keys over to Google a future of just streaming video games, never owning the hardware, never having direct access to the games that you purchase or that you buy a, another subscription fee, there's already <laughs> billions of those that most of us are paying every single month. Is this the type of future of gaming that we're looking for? And whether or not some of you watching this video or myself is looking for it, doesn't matter. Is the vast majority of people playing games just going to adopt it anyways because it's more convenient, less expensive up front, and provides a good enough of experience, even if it's not quite as good and low latency and as sharp as of an image as I'm going to get on my expensive gaming computer. For a lot of people out there, it might not matter. And if enough people pick it up, and enjoy the experience, that's just where the market's gonna go. And what does that mean for the future of video games? It's a, it's a pretty interesting, exciting, and also simultaneously terrifying time. I won't lie that I, I can picture the allure of something like this. It's an exciting potential for me, and it's something I would definitely want to check out. And I mean, hell, all, all I gotta do is sell my soul to Google. We've pretty much already done that, so sign me up.